at least with Orthodox Christianity, which seems to have alone prevailed in Persia till the arrival of the Nestorians. The description would apply very well to certain Gnostic sects. So Manichaean doctrines, like the Christians, um, especially that of Cardo and Marcio, which is, no wonder, as it was through that channel that Christianity became known to Mani. Masuda makes Mani a disciple of Cardoon. And the care which his biographer takes to determine the length of time which intervened between Marcio and Mani seems to betray some dim recollections of an historical connection between the two doctrines. So de Maynard 2, 167, and Flugel, page 51 and 85. The chief priest of Mani, the patriarch of Alexandria, Tamathius, allowed other patriarchs, bishops, and monks to eat meat on Sundays in order to recognize those who belong to the Manichaean sect, those who follow the heresy of Prodicus, most of possessing secret books of Zoroaster, Apocalypsis, Zoroastru, uh, forged by Adelphius or Aquilinus. Setting aside the Dean Cart, we have no Oriental document to help us in tracing them through the age of Arsacids, a complete historical desert, and we are driven for information to the classical writers who are on this point neither very clear nor always critical. The mention of books ascribed to Zoroaster occurs not seldom during that period, but it often applies to Alexandrian and Gnostic Apocrypha. Like Apadai de Epilegomenos ac Biblio. Yet, there are a few passages which make it pretty certain that there was a Mastian literature in existence in those times. Pausanias, traveling through Lydia in the second century of the Common Era, saw and heard Magian priests singing hymns from a book where the, these hymns were the same as the Gathas, still extent, we cannot ascertain. But this shows that there were Gathas. The existence of a Zoroastrian literature might be traced back as far as the 3rd century before Christ, if Pliny could be credited when he says that Hermippus had given an analysis of the books of Zoroaster, which are said to have amounted to two million lines, for want of external evidence of ascertaining whether the original texts were already in existence in the latter years of the Achaemenian dynasty, we must seek for internal evidence. A comparison between the ideas expressed in our texts and what we know of the ideas of the Achaemenian Persia might perhaps lead to safer inferences. Well, if we look at the popular and political arguments that people say exist for a type of, like, Islam in particular, um, it very often does not agree with the thing. In fact, if you print, if you pick up a Quran and start saying off reasons why, you know, trying to establish a link between the government, you, you know, there was a guy who published lists of Quranic verses that condemn Saudi Arabia and Egypt, while well, Egypt was ruled by a dictator too, and, uh, and Iran, and it got kicked out of all those countries, <laughs> you know, banned. Um, well, he was using his position in the UN to push that, but, um, Well, that 
that all the Avesta ideas were already fully developed in the time, or at least at the end of the Achaemenian dynasty, appears from the perfect accordance of the Count of Mazdaism and Theopompus. With the data of the Zen books, men when raised from the dead shall have no shadow any longer. Mahta Skion Poit Untas in India, what are called gods, have no shadows. Nalas in Persia, Rashid Adin was recognized to be a god from his producing no shadow, according to the Assassin's Journal Antique, 1877-1-392, the plant of eternal life. Haoma has no shadow. Well, maybe the formula together, but certainly the opium, the ephedra, the marijuana, the other things that go into it. Um, all the main features of Mazdin belief, namely the existence of two principles, a good and an evil one, are Mazd and Ahraman, the antithetical creations of the two supreme powers, the division of all this, the beings in nature into two corresponding classes, the limited duration of the world, the end of the circle between Ormazd and Ahraman, but the defeat and destruction of the evil principle, the resurrection of the dead, and the everlasting life, all these tenets of the Avesta had already been established. At the time of Philip and Aristotle, therefore we must admit that the religious literature then in existence, if there were any, must have differed but little so far as its contents were concerned, from the Avesta. Its extent was greater, of course, and we have a proof of this in the very account of Theopompus, which gives us details nowhere to be found in the present text, yet, and, yet the, and yet the authenticity of which is made quite certain by the comparative mythology. Persian tradition cannot be much relied on when it tries to go back beyond Alexander, and when that special point it seems to be more than an inference of later ages than a real tr tradition. But the inference happens to be right. Well, one of the things we can say about that sort of thing is, is there tends to be a variety of mythology in societies. Because people, you know, the idea that, oh, well, but... But the but the Jews, they you know, the the Bible is sort of a combination of, of probably a few different strains of Jewish tradition that kind of merged to form one text. But they formed theirs out of who knows how many other traditional systems. Um, so what we have records of may not have been even the main thing. Um, certainly some priest or ruler would have decided that, well, this is, you know, this is what I want to promote. But therefore, there is nothing that forbids us to believe with the Parsis that the fragments of which the Vesta is composed were already in existence before the Greek invasion. Professor Oppert thinks he's found in Darius's inscriptions an express mention of Ahraman. Yet, the philological interpretation of the passage seems to me still to obscure, still too obscure to allow any decisive opinions. Plutarch introduces Xerxes the first, speaking of Arimanias, but whether the king is made to speak the language of his own time or that of Plutarch's time is left doubtful. As to the allusions in Isaiah, 45, they do not necessarily refer to dualism in particular, but to all religions, 
not monotheistic. And if we look at its roots, um, putting Zervanism and some priestly sayings aside, the two divinity thing is not as supportive as people think. Is so, well, there are two spirits. Um, perhaps an archangel and a, a, a top angel and a top demon, you know, that doesn't preclude any. Um, 13. But it does not follow hence that the Achaemenian Avesta was the sacred book of the Achaemenians and of Persia, and it must not be forgotten that the account in Plutarch is not about the religion of Persia, but about the belief of the Magi and the lore of Zoroaster. Now, if we consider that the two characteristic features of the Avestan Magism are, so far as belief goes, the admission of two principles, and so far as the practice is concerned, the prohibition of burying the dead, we find that there is no evidence that the Achaemenian Persians admitted the former, and there is evidence that she did not admit the latter. But at the same time, it appears that both the belief and practice was already in existence, though peculiar to one class, the sacerdotal class, the Magi. The question whether the Achaemenian kings believed in dualism and knew of Ahraman is not yet settled. If there was a linguistic term that appeared at a certain point, it doesn't mean they didn't believe in Ahraman. And are they going to say they didn't believe in Ahramaz because Ahramaz is what they, the term they use? And the name, much stress has often been laid on the absence of the name of Ahraman in the religious formula engraved by Darius and Xerxes on the rocks of Persepolis and Naqse Rustam. It is never safe to draw wide conclusions from negative facts. Darius and Xerxes speak of Auramazda, quite in the style of the Avesta, and their not speaking of Ahraman is no sufficient proof of their not knowing him. They did not intend to publish a complete creed, nor had they to inscribe articles of faith. The account of the Persian religion in Herodotus also leaves, or seems to leave, Ahraman unnoticed. But it must be borne in mind that he does not expound the religious conceptions of the Persians, but only the religious customs. He describes their worship more than their dogmas, and not a single tenet is mentioned. He seems not to know anything of Ormazd, who was, however, most certainly the most supreme god of Persia in his days. Well, the supreme god would be the supreme god regardless of whether admitted or not, whatever, or whatever term would be used. Yet, in fact, he clearly alludes to Ormazd when he states the Persians worshipped Zeus, On the, summit, on the summits of mountains, and call by the name of Zeus the whole circle of the heavens, which exactly agrees with the character of Ormazd. So they were, instead of worshipping the Olympia group or whatever, they worship divinity all at once as Ormazd. I mean, there ended up being angel worship and stuff like that, but monotheism is at, at the core. Um, in the same way, the existence of Ahraman is indirectly pointed to by the duty enforced upon the faithful to persecute and kill noxious animals, as it was only on account of there being creatures of the evil principle and incarnations of it that this custom was enjoined as a religious duty. It appears it is true from the words of Herodotus, that it was only a custom peculiar to the Magi. But it shows, at least, that the belief in Ahraman was already then in existence, and that dualism was constituted, at least, as a Magium article of faith. A 
If we now pass from dogma to practice, we find that the most important practice of the Avestan law was either disregarded by the Achaemenian kings or unknown to them. According to the Avesta, bearing corpses in the earth is one of the most heinous sins that can be committed. We know that under Sassanians, the prime minister, Saasis, paid with his life for an infraction of that law. Corpses were to be laid down on the summits of mountains. They are to be devoured by birds and dogs. The exposure of corpses was the most striking practice of the Mazdian profession, and its adoption was a sign of conversion. Now, under the Achaemenian rule, not only the burial of the dead was not forbidden, but it was the general practice. Herodotus says, The Persians, says Herodotus, buried their dead in the earth after having coated them with wax. There are other features of the Avesta religion, which appear to have been foreign to Persia, but are attributed to the Magbe. The Va et Vodatha, the holiness of marriage between necks of kin, even the incest was unknown to Persia under Cambyses, according to Herodotus 331. But it was highly praised in the Vesta and it was practiced under the Sassassians. Agathias 2.31. In the times before the Sassassians, it is only mentioned as a law of the Magdi. Um, but there is evidence that it was instituted um, at a certain point. Because a king was like, oh, you don't see anything forbidden in your... Um, and people, they were afraid. And next thing you know, it was actually in the book. But it didn't sound like it was in the book before that. Um... I mean, it sounded like it wasn't the book. Um, I mean, what they claimed to be the book at that point. Um, but there was a Magian before the Achaemenian revival period. But Herodotus immediately, after stating that the Persians inter their dead, adds that the Magi do not follow the general practice, but lay the corpses down on the ground, to be devoured by birds. So it became a law for all people, whether laymen or priests, under the rule of the Sassanian, uh, of the Sassanians, was only the custom of the Achaemenians. And, but around that time, there were certain movements coming out of um, India or around India that sky burial was a more common thing. So, I mean, it's not that it didn't happen in some of the most ancient of times, because it does seem that sky burial could have been going on, you know, 13,000 years ago in Turkey. Um, the obvious conclusion is that the ideas and customs which are found in the Avesta are already in existence under the Agamemnon kings, but that taken as a whole, they were not the general ideas and customs of the whole of Persia, but only of the sacerdotal class, caste. They were, therefore, practically two religions in Iran, one for the layman and the other for the priests. The Avesta was originally the sacred book only of the Magi, and the progress of the religious evolution was to extend to layman what was the custom of the priests. Of the histories from whom it copies, still it seems to speak from contemporary evidence. Sesomenes, in Histories Ecclesiastes 2, 9, states that the care of worship belonged to the hereditary line of the Magi, as to a saucer dosa race. O sper t fulon ieratikon. And well, we see with Judaism, even though they compile first, first they compiled a series of texts, and particularly once they were done compiling those texts, you ended up um, a lighter and then a heavier period of, you know, the Mishnaic period, and then you have the Talmud periods. Um, well, or maybe I guess it was more of a continuing Talmud period, but. 
Um, but yeah, two points were full ones were compiled. So the customs and interpretations of the priests became the main thing, but their attempts at a sacred history, you know, at a reconstruction of the revelation and inspiration claimed, put into a, you know, a Bible, you could call it, um, you know, that came first. But So we see the same sort of thing here. Once they were confident about having the one, then they came in with the other 14. We are now able to understand how it was that the sacred book of Persia was written in a non-Persian dialect, and it had been written in the language of its composers, the Maki, who were not Persian. Well, we call, we call them Persian by race or something if we're going to say there's a race. It's Because they were the uh, Iranian side of those people. But between the priests and the people, there was not only a difference of calling, but also a difference of race, as the sacerdotal caste came from a non Persian province. What that province was, we know both from Greek historians and from Parsi traditions. All classical writers from Herodotus down to Amianus agree in pointing to Media as the seat and native place of the Bacchae, and Media says Marcellinus in 23.6 are the fertile fields of the Bacchae, having been taught in the magic science by King Hystaspes. You know, magic is in the willful changes in consciousness. They handed it down to their posterity, and thus from Hystaspes to the present age, an immense family was developed. Hereditarily devoted to the worship of what they considered to be gods in former times, their number was very scanty, but they grew up by and by into the number and name of a nation, and inhabiting towns without walls, they were allowed to live according to their own laws, protected by religious awe, putting aside the legendary account of their origin, one sees Tauton Magaon Fulon in the passage by Marcellinus, 15. Of the fourth century, the common era. There was in Media a tribe, Kodmaki, who had the hereditary privilege of providing Iran with priests, writing three centuries before Marcellinus considered Kodmaki as a sacerdotal tribe spread over the land. Lastly, we see in Herodotus. 365, that the usurpation of the Magian Smeris was interpreted by Cambyses as an attempt of Metis to recover the hegemony they had lost. And we learn from Herodotus 1, 101, that Metis were divided into several tribes. Vusa par atakeni strauchates arizanti burii and maki without us making any remark on the last name. We can hardly have any doubt that the priests were known as maki, belonging to the tribe of maki, and they were named after their origin, and that the account of Marcellinus may be correct, even for so early in a, per a period as that of Herodotus. 15. Parsi traditions agree with Greek testimonies that the priesthood was hereditary 
we see from the statement in the Mundahis that all the Malbets are descendants from King Meno Cheher, and even nowadays the priesthood cannot extend beyond the priestly families. The son of a Dastur is not obliged to be a Dastur, but no one that is not the son of a Dastur can become one. Again, that's the sort of thing that would have been inserted later, later or perhaps it was pre Zarathustra and not supporting this sort of thing is part of the reason why he would have been killed. Um, Raga of the three races, that is to say, Atropatena. Some say it is Rai. It is of the three races because the three classes, priests, warriors, and husband men were well organized there. Some say that Zartusht was born there. Those three classes were born from him. Well, three, four, whatever, um, is a system that seems whatever you peer, whatever period you have that you put Zarathustra in, it seems that, you know, you already had different social classes as such. That they came from Media, we see from the traditions about the native place of Zoroaster, their chief and the founder of their religion. Although epic legends place the cradle of Mazdian power in Bactria, at the court of King Istasps, Bactria was only the first conquest of Zoroaster. It was neither his native place nor the cradle of his religion, although there are two different traditions on this point. Both agree in pointing to Media according to the one he was born in Rai, that is, in Media, properly called. According to the other, he was born in Sheaths, that is, in Media Atropatin. The former tradition seems to be older. Is expressed directly in the Pahlavi commentary to the Vendidad 1.16. Oh, and Rai, Rai in Greek is Ragai. And there is in the Avesta itself, Yasa 19, 18. And 50, a passage that either alludes to it or shows how it originated. How many masters are there? There are the masters of the house, the lord of the borough, the lord of the town, the lord of the province, and the Zarathustra, the high priest, as the fifth. So it is in all lands, except in the Zarathustrian realm, for there there are only four masters in Haragba, the Zarathustrian city. Who are they? They are the master of the house, the lord of the borough, the lord of the town, and Zarathustra is the fourth. This amounts to saying that the high priest, the Maubadon, Maubad, held in the position of the Dahviuma, our lord of the land, and it was the chief magistrate. It may be suspected that this was the independent Sacerdotal state, which is spoken of in Marcellinus, and suspicion is raised to a certain degree of probability by the following lines in Haput. Ustunawand, a celebrated fortress in the district of Dunbawand 
in the province of Rai. It is very old and was strongly fortified. It is said to have been in existence more than 3,000 years and to have been the stronghold of the Mas Mogon of the land during the times of paganism. This word, which designates the high priest of Zoroastrian religion, is composed of Mas, great, and Mogon, which means Magian. Khaled besieged it, and the power of the last of them. The Persian Ghazan, the Byzantine Gaza Gonzaka, the site of which was identified by Sir Henry Rawlinson with Takht e Suleiman, The commentary in regard to the Zarathustrian city has here, that is to say, he was the fourth master of his own land. Their spreading and wandering over Mazdian lands appears from Yasna 42, 6, 12, 34. We bless the coming of the Athrabans, who come from afar to bring holiness to countries. You know, those who perform rituals around a fire. And we find out that there's a, rec a recollection of the of a Magian dynasty that seems to survive, but dimly, that Zoroaster was followed by a long series of Magi. Astana, Astra, Psyche. Till the destruction of the Persian Empire by Alexander. Well, what level of rulers they were, it depends. Like, we hear the Shia and how they have um, leaders. And, well, they were, for the most part, not the leaders of the whole communities. So that sort of phenomena occurs. You can have a succession of leaders, but they weren't the political authorities. Even in ancient Israel, that seems to be the case, is that most of the individuals they thought were they called prophets had not, you know, that connection. According to another tradition, Zarathustra was born in Atrapanta. The very same commentary which describes Raga as being identical with Ra'e as a native place of Zarathustra also informs us that Raga was brought by others to be 